Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Pause up, pet pals. Welcome to Four-Legged Life. I'm your host, Arden Moore, and we have a repeat guest extraordinaire. We have professional dog trainer and a person who has boxers who are making history in the sport of dog agility. Please join me in giving pause and applause to Kara Armour. Kara, I'm so glad you got back on the show. I'm so glad to be back. I always love talking to you. There's just never enough time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, um, years ago, for any of you, I, I had a couple of dogs that I humbly tried to do agility with. Never competitive. Always just practice rounds. And uh, I'll tell you, you can get in good shape. Um, and it really does uh, pump up your communication with your pet. But um, I look pathetic compared to someone of uh, the level of our guest, Do uh, uh, Kara Armour. She not only with her team has won national acclaim, but she's also teaching it and to people of all different levels. So Kara, Let's do a little brag because you got some boxers to brag about. Can you tell us about this particular one, uh, Debbie? Uh, because Debbie is like smoking on the on, in agility. Debbie is amazing. Um, Debbie is the number one preferred boxer in AKC in agility, and she has been since 2018. Wow. She Wait has. She's had that title for four years. Yes. Wow. And I'm and I'm laughing because any of you that see the YouTube broadcast, um, <laughs> Rusty, the performer, just jumped up and you're going to see a little tail from the top. of. He's trying to tell you he can do agility, too. <laughs> yeah, <stop it. laughs> so what I mean, what does that mean? And that's a boxer. That's pretty awesome. Right. She's also this. This is more impressive because out of all working breeds. So your Dobermans, your Rottweilers, your uh, Portuguese water dogs, all very agile dogs. She was the number one ranked out of all working dogs for two years and for the past two years she has been the number three all breed preferred agility dog oh wait a minute that, dog. that's a big wolf all we're talking the border collies and the australian shepherds who always seem correct. to be born with the agility gene correct she was the number three it, she actually followed a sheltie and a maltese of all dogs Ooh. then debbie I wonder what those border collies and Aussies are saying when they see Deb. Oh, we got her. <laughs> no. <laughs> Debbie's, Debbie's claim to fame has been consistency. And she's recently over the past few years added speed. And that's because I finally developed into the handler she needed. <laughs> so for folks that are new to agility and then others that are in the game, Tell us why it's such a great sport for dogs and what, what got you into it? It's really multifaceted and, and multi-leveled. And what I mean by that is just to compare to say something like scent work, nose work. Okay. The dog has to find source of scent and then they have to tell the handler, the owner, the person that they found it. Now, there's a lot of environmental things to that, but it's really one job. Okay. With agility, you, the dog and the handler, the human, have to communicate with each other while on the move, while <laughs> obstacles are in the way, while challenges are presented. So, for example, if you come off a dog walk, which is that 12-inch ramp that goes up and comes down, yes. and you see a tunnel in front of you, the dog may assume to take the tunnel. However, it might need to pull off to take a jump, and you oh. have to communicate all of that. And what I have you get learned, like GPS systems built in, <laughs> you get maps. Um, I always joke that Debbie can read numbers because sometimes <laughs> she's really just saved my hiney out there. Um, but really, it's just what I love about it is I always tell, you know, my my puppy pet clients all the way up to my advanced clients. We are a verbal species. They are more gesture based. Good. You're better off closing your mouth. Now, some people have amazing handling where they can just use verbals, and that is incredible training. I have a small mixture of both, but I am mostly gesture-based. Okay. I can tilt my shoulder in, which cues my dog to turn. Oh, okay. Right? If I have an open hand, it sends my dog out. If I have a closed hand, it brings my dog in. What if you sneeze, holds. though? What does that mean? <laughs> it can throw them out of the weed poles, for sure. <laughs> they go for that's, a clean box. 
<laughs> that's where you have to proof because humans sneeze, they pull up their pants, they tie their shoe, they do all kinds of things. I actually lost a shoe in a competition once. It fell off. It fell off. You I had kept video going though, right? <laughs> I did keep going. You have to. <laughs> Oh my God. So, yeah, ag agility, I just really like it because you're exercising, you're running, you're running beside your best friend. Sometimes you're sending them ahead, sometimes you're beside them, sometimes you're ahead, and yeah. you're communicating to, to take this course that was set by somebody else, and you're being judged about your performance on it. So, it's kind of like dancing with the stars, only more athletic, and, and your dog is your partner. It's dancing with the dogs, 100%. Yeah. I do say to a lot of my students, when you're learning some of the handling maneuvers, yeah. there are things called side changes where the dog might be on your left side and you need them to get on your right. Okay. And so we have front cross, rear cross, blind cross. <laughs> and when we're doing those, I have people set their dogs aside and we just go out on the floor and it's like teaching a dance class. Oh my God. So what the question I've had is, I wish that, here comes Rusty, bye Rusty, is how... You know, you go to so many different agility events and they have the, the ring set up each time differently and you go to different obstacles at different times. So how do you clean, erase your slate, your brain, so that this is fresh, new, this is what this one is? How do you do that? Because you've done a lot. Practice makes perfect. And I will not lie. There are courses from five years ago I can still remember. Oh, my gosh. From, well, there's you courses from five minutes <laughs> No, there's courses from five minutes ago I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> I'll so go to class on Monday and my, my instructor will say, remember this from this weekend? I'm like, nope. So how, um, do, you, how do you help somebody focus in the, the, the now and just that course and what goes when? So really know yourself. Some people are very visual. I'm, you, you know, some people can look at a map and understand lines, which is pathways. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more kind of physical. I need to go walk the course. The map is good to just let me know the general idea, but I need to walk the course and visualize my dog landing and my position. And I actually go out and I count the numbers and I say them out loud to myself because when you get adrenaline, your oh, yeah. brain, part of your brain shuts down. And so I, I don't need to... adrenaline for my brain to shut down, but go ahead. <laughs> So I, I just have to practice muscle memory of really just memorizing where those numbers are and my positions on the course and where I visualize my dog landing okay. and their speed. And it's Do not, they I'm actually right. show the number on the course somewhere? Yes, we are allowed oh. to have numbers on the I know, oh, I know. That goodness. does make it much easier. That does so, make it easier. But some people can't see the Some people's brains just, they cannot see the numbers. They, they memorize the, the course path. So each person is a little bit different. Each team is a little bit different, but that's how I do it. It's, it's muscle memory. Now I do struggle at a two ring or bigger trial. You can have two, three or six, or you can have six ring trials easily. Um, what does I might that have mean? Have, what does that mean? So each ring is a competition space. Okay. And so you can have a jumpers ring, which is jumpers and weaves. You can have a standard ring, which is all the obstacles. It has the, the dog walk, the table, the A-frame, and a bunch of jumps and tunnels. Mm -hmm. You can have um, different games. So each ring would have a different course. And oh if I'm gosh. running three dogs at once, I may have to memorize three courses in my head at once. Wow. I do not do well with that. <laughs> I, I don't even do well <laughs> trying to comprehend what you just said. I'm just I thinking, run out of brain space. <laughs> some of us get lost in the grocery aisle. I mean, so come on. <laughs> You're doing it pretty well. But, you know, it's working your brain. It's working your body. It's working your dog's brain, your dog's body. So um, this is better than going to the gym. It's also social. Yeah. I have some of my greatest friends are agility people. And we're from all walks of life. You get to mix a whole bunch of people that all have one thing in common. We love dogs. So it's, it's I really, the camaraderie is amazing. I would not have kept up with the sport if there weren't as many supportive people in it that there are. Okay. And there's different sports and they have different communities, but I will always speak highly of the agility community. All right, we're speaking with Kara Armour on the subject A, A for agility. We're gonna learn more after we take this break. So sit and stay, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Four-Legged Life Show. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I didn't know there were so many aspects to agility. And I know there's a lot of dog sports out there. You talked about um, dogs that do, what do you call it, sniff, sniff trials or scent? So it's scent work or nose work, depending on the organization. There's barn hunt. 
there's lure coursing, there's dock diving. I could go on. I love, I actually, I lived in California for a while. I love dock diving, seeing those dogs fly off the, the ramp and into the water, but catching uh, and humbly, um, <clears throat> everyone. I had a 12 pound dog named Cleo, who was an original member of the SoCal Surf Dogs. And so I am humbly was embarrassed every time because my dog could surf better than me. But agility has been around a long time. Is it one of the most popular sports, Akira? It is gaining popularity. So most dog activity started with just confirmation and obedience. And confirmation is the, the show dogs, you know, the Westminster Kennel Club we all think of. Yes. And then obedience, everything really stemmed from obedience. And agility started in Europe back in the oh. 1970s, in the late 70s. It did not come over to the U.S., in AKC until 1994. What? I That's, know. All those previous dogs, like, wait a minute. I, I didn't know. know it was that and, young. Yeah, and it is based off of horse, right? Horse jumping, right? They would have a oh. course. Yeah, so it is based off of that. It's, it's a combination of that and obedience, right? Sit, stays, come to heels, just come to heel over a jump. <laughs> so it's, it's fabulous because it gets to use what your dog was built to do, right? If you take your dog for a hike in the woods, what do they do? They jump over logs, they weave between trees, they, oh, they yeah. jump over a little stream, they do little hops and leaps and they would go, go up over something that wasn't so sturdy like a seesaw, you yeah. know? So it, it really mimics nature, except for we have one wonderful judge. She's from the South and she says, now remember, it's just dogs jumping over plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it took the fun out of it. Uh, no, but well, it keeps it, us. It keeps us humble. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm I'm so scared to ask this next question because everybody who's on YouTube, there's some ribbons in the back. Go ahead, turn your head a little bit so we can see them. But oh, lordy, just... lordy, lordy, that is not. I mean, um, do you need to get a bigger house? What's the deal I... with all the ribbons that your beautiful boxers have uh, uh, won? Where are they? Actually, I, your wall looks pretty clean. Come on, what'd you do? I can move and go into the dog room, which we run out of wall space. Those are, this is going to hurt some people. Those are just <laughs> championship ribbons I've won in the past few months that I haven't hung on the wall. Oh my gosh. And there's about 10 of them. Oh my gosh. Okay, keep going. <laughs> so, um, are so, you a ribbon hoarder? <laughs> I am a ribbon hoarder. Oh um, I have a ribbon problem for sure. <laughs> I have stopped taking a lot of ribbons, but championship ribbons and meaningful ribbons I will always take. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I'm looking in my art stand for all of you on the YouTube aspect, and I have one thing. Hang on. And it is my President's Award for the best of the best for um, Cat Writers Association that I won this year, and that's it. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's okay. Um, so tell us the fact, like some people maybe are not going to have, uh, you know, be able to go to a lot of events and all that, but for the folks that are, you tell us your teaching side, because not only are you very good in the sport, but you are passing it on. So tell us about, um, levels or what you can give them to give them tips on how to get in a class and, and all that. Sure. Well, I always say to check with your local training facility and see if they have an agility class or some are doing um, exposure to sports class, such as rally, which is kind of obedience and agility together. Yeah. There's a lot of different opportunities, but under no circumstance do you need to attend a class with the, the goal to compete. If that's your goal, fantastic. But there's recreational agility once a week, getting out and doing something fun with your dog, especially as the summer heats up. Find yeah. a building that has AC. You guys get to run around and have a blast. You get to learn communication with your dog. You get to watch your dog jump and enjoy obstacles. It's, you know, it's not, I have all different levels. I have baby puppies that were on little wobble boards Aww. and we're getting used to the, the world falling out from underneath us. But that's and good. That's good. You're teaching yeah, them it's good. how it's to different exercises. Correct. Correct. And then I have all the way up to, you know, advanced students that are, you know, competing at the levels that I am and, and they have goals and aspirations. So I think it's for anybody. It's for any dog, any dog and human that likes it. And, and I think there's, I've seen both. I've seen a, a skilled dog who's human, just couldn't get into it. And that's fine. And I've seen humans that have the drive and desire to do it. And the dogs just, man, the, didn't the like dogs it. are sitting there going, you, you go through the 
You go yeah. through the hoop. Go, go, you go through the tunnel. I like to see you. Well, years ago, I uh, had dog parties, and we would use tunnels. We called it the tunnel of love, and we would have competitions. So you would have to kiss your dog, and then you both had to go through the tunnel, and the time did not stop until the dog kissed you back. And I say this because these were at dog parties I held. The border collies went through fast, but it always was a boxer or a bulldog that would waddle through or squeeze through and kiss their pet parent. And they won because the boxer, the border collies were too busy going, what's next? What's next? No, I don't want to kiss you right now. Go, I was going to say to do things. <laughs> the boxer would have definitely won that. Mine loved to give a kiss. <laughs> I kiss them before each run. We, we give a little kiss. So where do you see the future of the sport going? Where, what do you see in the next five, 10 years? I do see growth that is expanding um, with pet ownership, particularly dog ownership, up 200% since 2019. I oh. hope it grows for the sake of enrichment and physical exercise for dogs and humans. I always tell people, I would be much more overweight if it weren't for agility. Okay. It keeps me active. It gets me out. It gives me a reason to get up and go. And I think, again, whether you just do it recreationally, a class a week, or you have aspirations to compete, it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. So I see it expanding. Um, I encourage everybody, I'm not certain when the show will release, but there is the Westminster Agility Championship happening on June 18th. Okay. And so that's something that everybody can watch and really kind of see what we do and the fun we have. And you're going to see dogs that they're top level dogs, but they're going to get in that environment and they're going to maybe run off and take the wrong obstacle or go <laughs> run into the crowd or. And I guess it's okay. You've got to laugh, right? Because they're reading our energy and our emotional state. So don't, don't be tough on your pets, right? Don't be tough on your dog. No, not at all. They didn't sign that entry form. You did. <laughs> and the best thing is at the end, they know when they do well. Well, how do you demonstrate yes. it to like Debbie? What's going on? Debbie really actually gets off on a crowd. She likes oh. cheering. And the more people cheer, you can see her light up. She gets really excited because at the end of every run, she gets quite the, the jackpot of treats. Oh, She gets okay. a, a lot of beef heart followed by a duck foot. Oh, uh, I, I'd like a double <laughs> of that, please. Yeah. Hey, everybody, we're speaking with Kara Armour. How do people find out about you, Kara? Well, you can check my website. It's getactivepaws.com. Um, you can pretty much find me anywhere, particularly on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, although not as good, but yeah, it's, you know, if you look up type agility boxer, you'll find <laughs> there it. There you go. That makes it really <laughs> easy. Hey everybody, we're going to take a break and, uh, we're going to come back to the four legged life show. So everybody just sit and stay. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life. Make sure to subscribe so you're up to date with all of our Four-Legged Life content. Four-Legged Life. Four-Legged Life.